add and now let's go on to the next one which is synchronizing audio so in this case here what I've done is I've created basically an image file um, which has let's see nine slides in it and each one is your standard three seconds long okay so yeah, it doesn't really matter but what you would do in ahead, ahead of time is typically is you're going to synchronize your audio that you're going to bring in to um, to the slide lengths. So if I decided that this first slide should be up for you know 7.3 seconds before the slide changes, uh, I would do that. Why am I doing it here? Because then what I can do is when I bring in uh, audio, and if that audio is, for instance, covering the whole file, I'll bring in Vivaldi's Estate here. If that's covering the whole file, um, meaning this is going to be one long audio track, I can synchronize my audio to the slides by putting in, by having the slide themselves be timed correctly so that it's going to um, synchronize. Why? Because when you bring in an audio file that's longer than your slide, it gives you options here. And the option I will choose in this case is to retain the current slide duration. You could do this distribute the audio file, but I'll show you how that works in just a second. So retain the current slide duration, I click OK, and now I'll see that all of these slides have an audio track on them. And in fact, all of them have retained their current slide timings. That's still the 7.3. The rest of them are still three seconds long, except for the last one, which is going to have all the bulk of the remaining um, audio on it. So this one goes on for about a minute and 41 seconds, this looks like. Uh, 40, yeah, 41 seconds. So um, once you've done that, you remember that other option that says you want to time the slides yourself, well, you can go to audio here and choose to go to um, uh, edit and then edit not the object or slide, but edit project. And when you do that, you're going to see a warning that says uh, by doing this, you're going to lose your closed captions. It's OK for the moment. I don't have any. And in fact, I don't suggest you put those in there until you uh, do this. But now what you'll see here is if I zoom this out, is you'll see that all of my slides are in here. And now I can move each of these slide markers to where I want them to be in my file. So I can distribute them. Sorry, I can just yeah move this over and put it where I want, put this one where I want, etc. And if I do that and then save it, the slide timings will change for 7, 8, and 9, and 6 as well. So if I go back to those now, I'll see that 6, 7, um, six and seven are not going to be three seconds long anymore. They're going to be longer depending on what changes I made there and so on. Now, I hope that answers your question, but I still have a little doubt because what you may have meant is that within a slide, you may have, for instance, a long audio track and that you have synchronized elements to it. But now that it, that audio track has been re-recorded, it's not uh, lining up anymore. There's really not much you can do about that except to, of course, uh, do it on every slide. Move the op move the object so that it's being synchronized correctly on the slide to that object. So unfortunately, there's not much you can do about that. But hopefully, the ability to edit all the audio in your file at once um, can really help because that at least will get you to the point where your your slides are being divided up correctly. All right. Well, that wraps it up for me today. I hope that you have found this helpful. If we come back to our uh, list here. We covered all of these, uh, how to stop audio from repeating when returning to a slide, and that required a bit of a, um, a variable, in essence, and uh, an advanced action. Uh, Lee Bandy wanted to know how to stop playback of videos, and I gave hopefully some good suggestions there that you're, you're going to find helpful. Brian Frame was asking about uh, how to create your own navigation buttons so as to avoid using the standard play bar, and I showed a couple of examples of that. Um, Buddy DeGray wanted to know how to skip quiz questions to be able to go back and answer those, and I explained that that really wasn't possible using the, uh, the quiz options themselves, but he already knew that because he asked me in his um, uh, question, uh, how would you do that with an advanced action? So I showed you a bit how you would set, the, set that up. And then Jay Shuck wanted to know how to do the zooming, and I showed uh, an example of doing that. And Dick Marr at the end was asking about creating an exam uh, randomly chosen from a pool and how to synchronize audio in a file after the audio has changed. 
Well, that's it for this week, uh, this, this edition. Uh, I look forward to seeing what questions you have for the next one. I'm going to try really hard to make sure that the next one is delivered on March 15th, so get your questions in now. I can't guarantee I'll get them all answered uh, in the next edition, but I'll always try to. And if you ask me a question that is has an extremely belabored answer, I will let you know that so that you don't expect me to try to cover it. But anything that um, I can cover within a reasonable amount of time, I certainly will. I hope you found this helpful, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Have a great um, March, and we will talk soon. Bye now.